someone else get eaten by the tarp? Oh, look out. Oh, God. Close. Got to move. Close. High stepping. Oh, oh boy. There we go. Mayday. Oh, no. oh, no. He got eaten by the tarp. He's he, under there. They're not Somebody... even stopping. No pause. Somebody's going to get him out of there. Every man left behind. Uh, crawl. <laughs> He's under there somewhere. This is like basic we training. Lost him. <laughs> now all the wind is catching the tarp. They don't have it staked down yet. One of the grounds crew members nearly got lifted up into the air. He just did a stop, drop, and roll to try to stake that to the ground with his body. That was a save right there. Fans appreciate it. And a heads-up job by his teammates to help him out. That man right there saved the tarp. Oh, sacrifice oh. still working. Oh, and now no pause. <laughs> Dude, you're a legend. Oh boy. He did not even a like take it to the house, just like on to the next piece of work. Now to Sean Brown clinging to life. And and legitimately, that can be really scary. If you've ever pulled a tarp, those things are heavy, they are massive. And when the wind whips and curls underneath, it can be a frightening scene. And thankfully, he wears a smile and he serves as a human stake as they try to get this tarp locked down. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium, where it continues to rain and rain hard here in the Bronx. This is the third delay of the night, 45 minutes before the game, when not a single drop fell. 37 minutes in the top of the sixth, and then after two outs and about four minutes of action, another rain delay, and this one came not only with rain check out what happened after booming thunder rocked Yankee Stadium moments ago that's Brett Gardner and company getting shocked just as we did in the booth and just as the Red Sox did on their side of the field Jared Saltalamacchia says I'm out no mas and that's what we're sitting through right now here at Yankee Stadium. Huge at bat right here for Yomer Sanchez in this game with the Sox down one nothing in a persistent rain. This is as motivated of a rainstorm as you're going to see. Undying rain. There's a strike on Sanchez two and one and it's coming down harder again. One out in the fifth inning and they are going to wave it off. I would say at this point they pretty much have to. I mean, you'd love to play on in this inning, but the field is taking so much water. Wow. There, there is lightning in the area. We just saw a bolt of it. And when you hear the thunder right after the lightning, that means it's pretty close. It is right on top yep. of us at this point. So we're going to have a rain delay here at Guaranteed Rate Field. It's about time we started this one up. Couple of men on, only one out as Brian Flynn comes into the game. As Yolmer Sanchez will face Flynn. McCann at second base, Rondon at first. As the 29 year old Flynn readies for a three and one to Sanchez. And Yolmer hits it right side and through. That's a base knock. Here comes McCann around third. The throw behind is in time. Rondon is out at second base, and we have a tie ball game. One and two. In the dirt again, two balls, two strikes. There goes the throw to second base, and it stays on the infield. Sanchez is into second. So now a base hit could give the Sox the lead. And they're going to bring on the ground screw again. Unreal. Wow. Well, look, it's, it's pouring like crazy, and it kind of begs the question. I know we don't want to give outs, but. Maybe swinging at that last pitch or two. Suddenly the inning's over, a different scenario. Now, with two outs in the inning, and, and Yomer swimming back to his position, which is at this point on the bench. Good for Yomer. Have some fun with it. 1 1 in the fifth inning. Here goes Yomer. Now, if this ball ended up in center field, you never know where he would have ended up. And here it's called. Yomer says, well, forget about this. I'm going to go have some fun. <laughs> a drenching rain. And Yomer just needs a shower after getting all that dirt on him. So he's just going to naturally let this happen. We've come this far to go nowhere. Yomer Jacks. Look at him rile up the crowd. <laughs> oh, <he's gonna> <laughs> 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 
There you go. Never a dull nor a dry moment with Yomer. Just a couple of moments ago, Marcus Hanel, uh, one of the bullpen catchers for the Brewers, as soon as he found out the game was going to be postponed, he wanted to make sure he had some fun tonight before they head back out of town. And <laughs> shades of Rick Dempsey a little bit there, uh, having some fun on the tarp, and uh, former Pirate farmhand <laughs> trying to revel in some of the uh, poor weather tonight. Well, a good job by the ground crew uh, getting that tarp rolled out as there has been a rain delay, but look how far they have to go to carry it. <laughs> They're covering the outfield. <laughs> now they've got a, I mean, a long way to go to get that tarp on the infield. I would think that there's got to be a better way to do this, Ralphie. They're going to have a lot of experience doing this. There's no doubt about it. When you're in Florida in the summertime, you get these rain showers. Well, they're, they're covering the outfield though now. <laughs> it's the infield they want to keep dry. <laughs> well, when uh, Joe Robbie Stadium was open back on August 16th, 1987, they didn't need a tarp. For it was that night when the Chicago Bears beat the Miami Dolphins 10 to 3. 73,000 for football in this stadium, 43,909 the capacity for baseball. But these guys have a long way to go with that tarp. And it feels getting very wet while they're coming up from right field. That's my point. Instead of a, a tarpaulin, they're going to have to re spell that and call it a tarp pulling contest. They're on the infield. Like it's got to be a better way to do turn. this now. I, you know, I, I might be old fashioned, but look at the left side of the infield. <laughs> and now they are bogged down. In the process, in the process, I mean, you could see this coming. The left side of the infield is just. And one guy is out in right field. <laughs> this is great. They cannot move it. But see, guys, I don't know anything about keeping a field, but I do know that if you roll that closer to the infield, you don't have to drag it as far. <laughs> Back in late July of 1864, General George Pickett at a little town in Pennsylvania named Gettysburg had a famous charge. And I'll guarantee you, this grounds crew here in Miami charging about as zealously as Pickett's crew. Here it is, instant replay. Take it, Ralph. Talk about a stone wall. <laughs> stone wall Jackson never had it this bad. <laughs> Watch this. They're going full speed ahead. Urged down by the crowd, urged down by both teams, and they come to a screeching halt. Whoops. <laughs> Just like a volley had been fired into them. Even Renee Latchman, the manager, is out to help them. And uh, that is the first time all year that we've seen that many people in a Mets dugout laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Trees have uh, have oh, sprouted roots, potatoes, new animals, and everything. And also, the other side of the coin is the rain has practically stopped. Of course, here they go. <laughs> Pickets charge. They've given up the frontal attack, and now they're coming in from the flank. Flank. Here. Flank. You got it. <laughs> this is a flank attack right here. The frontal didn't work. You saw the volley stop them. Everyone knew how ludicrous Pickett's charge was. And uh, here it is 129 years later and just as ludicrous. <laughs> They've gained about 20 feet, though, by this maneuver. I would say in another half hour, they'll, they'll probably get it right. 
the meantime, Iran has stopped. To almost, uh, almost stopped. <laughs> oh, my goodness. By the way, uh, you might be interested. It is 4,430 miles from Miami to Edmonton. <laughs> Here we go. They've, Earlier. They've, they've made it. Look at this. They're going to make it, and it stopped raining completely. <laughs> it has stopped. Oh, this is wonderful. Hallelujah. Earlier tonight, we had that thunderstorm, and it delayed the start of this game. About two hours and 15 minutes, the rain has gone away, and now we're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Kansas City with a 6-2 lead. They'll face a new pitcher out of the Blue Jays' bullpen. It'll be the left-hander, Jaime Garcia. Third reliever of the night. During the delay, the bullpens went into a, well, they went into bullpen mode is what they did. They do what guys in the bullpen do. They're having a little dance-off competition, and Costume competition. Now, yeah, now they're breaking out some. Look, like they're getting ready to knock off a bank or something. A little fishing. Diamondbacks counter with a little bowling. <laughs> Stubborn ten pin. Relievers impressed. Yeah. Okay. They yielded to the Diamondbacks that particular competition. 